Merriam-Webster. Merriam-Webster. How many of you are measuring your social media efforts with the Hootsuite or the HubSpot or some other, one of the other tools, right? Uh, how many of you use Google Analytics to, to look at things, right? So you all have a problem. It's not a personal problem, it's just a problem. Uh, and that's this, that all the data that you're looking at is uh, very likely misleading. It's certainly missing a whole big swath of information that you don't have in this data. We have a saying internally in my company that it's better to have no data than bad data. We keep that saying internal because we want to sell you data. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, bad data is, is, in a way, is worse than no data because it can mislead you. And the social media data that you're looking at and a lot of the Google Analytics data that you're looking at is also very, very misleading. And, and we spend our days looking at spreadsheets and, and looking at the, the withering torrent of graphs that we just saw in the last presentation. But we need to pick our heads up out of that. In fact, you need to get out more, which is why I've called this why you need to get out more. <laughs> when we look at things like social media data and uh, social metrics and digital metrics and things like that, uh, social media is often horrendously misunderstood, miscounted, undercounted, and almost never given proper attribution for its role in Chris's jigger. So I'm, I'm stealing the jigger now. I like that better than the funnel. Uh, but we're, we're not alone in that. Don't be surprised. Some of the names of companies that we trust for data don't really get it either. It's enormously misunderstood. And I'll show you this study that uh, Gallup put out. <laughs> Americans say social media have, and we can debate have or has. <laughs> yeah. Americans say social media with little sway on purchases, right? This was, this was put out earlier this year. Uh, and they actually, are, are, that headline is based on this. How much do social media typically influence your purchasing decisions? 62% uh, say no influence at all. And so that's where that headline came from. I might argue that 35% saying some influence probably shouldn't be ignored, right? <laughs> but here's the fundamental disconnect between all this data that we're seeing about social attribution and how it doesn't affect this and it doesn't affect that. In this same article, on this same page, the next piece of data was this. Americans' reason for social media use. Please indicate whether or not you use social networking websites uh, for any of the following purposes. 94% to connect with friends or family. 53% to share with others you know. 40% to find out about a company or organization, right? 29% uh, to find user reviews or product information. How many of you watch TV this week? How many of you watch TV to find out information about a product or a brand? <laughs> okay, that's just you. <laughs> Right? And it is. That's, we, don't, we don't consume media for that. And here, look, here's a, a report on the same page that says 40% of social media use is to find out information about products or brands. 29% is to find user. Of course it matters. It absolutely matters. And when we see things like this, that Forrester's put this out twice now. Uh, this is a, a study that they did with a client that measures clickstream attribution. And they showed that social uh, is less than 1% of attribution for sales. I usually never say the word only when I represent a number, but if there's a less than symbol, I will. Uh, only 1%. Huge disconnect, huge problem here, okay? Because social doesn't play well with things like clickstream attribution. And if you're only looking at digital metrics, not only are you not getting the whole picture, you're very likely getting a really, really misleading picture. Think about it this way. If you're looking at your Google Analytics, right? Let's say that, so I, I just bought this notebook. It's a, it's a Midori Traveler's Notebook. I love it. I bought this recommendation for a friend, and I went and I, I Googled it where I could buy it, right? And then I bought it. So my Google Analytics is going to ping, that came from search. Let's spend some more money on search. That didn't come from search. That came from social. I used Google like a link shortener utility. That's all I did, right? Find a quick way to connect me to this thing I already know I want to buy. And that's never in your Google Analytics. Right? If I tweet something about this wonderful Midori notebook, I made this. No idea. <laughs> if I tweet something about this notebook, I'm not going to tweet it and say, I love my new Midori Traveler's notebook. You can read more about it at Webly slash notebook. I'm not, I don't do link tracking when I do stuff like that on social. I just share stuff, right? And you read it, and maybe you talk to me about it, and maybe you go buy it, you Google it. Once again, search gets the attribution. Or how about this one? Here's, here's my favorite kerfuffle. I go to a store, 
I see a product, I research it on my phone, I go back home, I buy it on my desktop. As far as your digital metrics are concerned, I just became two to six wildly disconnected people <laughs> that you can never square, right? So there's enormous gaps falling through the cracks of the metrics that you're looking at. And in these gaps can sometimes be chasms of insight that you're missing if you're only looking at your digital metrics and you're not getting out. If you're thinking data first and not customer first, you're going to miss those gaps. So my charge to you would be to think customer first. When uh, I first met Christine, was at the TEDx Cambridge and uh, Tesla was there doing test drives. I'm gonna make a bold assumption. I'm gonna say that everything you know about Tesla came from social media. <laughs> I bet that is true almost without exception, right? You don't own one, there's no dealerships, they don't advertise. You've seen one drive around maybe, maybe you aspirationally want one. Everything you know about Tesla very likely comes from social media. This is not measured. They were doing test drives there. Now to me, a test drive, they viewed it as trial. To me, that is a data collection opportunity that is in the real world where you can ask people, what do you think about Tesla? Where did you learn about Tesla? Now what do you think about Tesla? And you and I had a conversation about this. You, you actually, you took the test drive or, you, or you, no. you went in and looked at it? Yeah, you went in and looked at it and we both had the same observation. This is a scary vehicle. <laughs> this, is a, this made me uncomfortable to look at all that. This, there's a lot of controls and things in there. I'm, I'm afraid to touch anything. I don't know how to use this, this machine, right? But I'm not stupid. So I had an opinion before the trial. My opinion after the trial changed very slightly. And it is incumbent upon you to think about all the ways that you can get out more into the world, whether that's reaching out to people online or reaching out to people offline where things happen. And understanding the gaps between what they know about your brand or product and how that's changed and what changed that. And the only way you can do that is by talking to people. The only way you can do that is by talking to people in the moment. And maybe that's in the moment online, maybe that's just asking them what led you, what brought you here, why did you buy this, how did you find out about us. Find those little moments, those mobile moments almost, those little transactional moments. Uh, I, I recently took my 10 year old, or nearly 10 year old son to Chili's. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> is anybody here from Chili's? Because it was terrible. Uh, but here's something I really, really appreciated about it. They had a kiosk, or a ziosk, as it's called, at each table. And you could pay, and you could play games on it. Uh, you, pay your, you see your bill, see that it's correct, pay it right there. As soon as you pay your bill, you're given a survey that's really easy to, to you know, about your, about your experience. Okay, terrible, 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 terrible. Um, <laughs> but that is a moment. Find those moments that are customer-focused where you can bridge the gap between one piece of digital information, the number of uh, tweets I'm getting, the number of mentions, and another piece of digital information, the number of people who click through to a white paper, the number of people who downloaded something, you know, some piece of collateral, right? Find those moments that bridge those gaps by following the customer first and not the data first. Remember that you're missing a lot when you're only looking at those spreadsheets. And mind the gap. <laughs> and get out. Thank you. Um, when you talk about following the customer first and mining their gap, mm -hmm. any insights with regards to, from an analytical or metric standpoint, where you can quantify back? You know, earlier we were talking about there might be some things you can't measure. Yeah. But how can you, t some type of way, quantify that experience to report back up? Mm -hmm. uh, there's, well, there's three quick recommendations I would make. Number one, uh, if you are doing any kind of link tracking, uh, really look into applying some kind of taxonomy to that link track. Applying as much metadata uh, and as many different links to things as you possibly can. Don't just create, here's a link to my content. Create a link to your content with some metadata that's, I'm, I'm sharing it with a specific audience on this specific channel. Uh, and here's a little something about the content that's tweaked a little bit differently. Try to create taxonomy as much as you can to give a little bit more context to those numbers. Uh, second thing is, is qualitative research. I'm a huge fan of qualitative research, and to translate that, that just means talking to your customers. Uh, use your data not as the answer, but as part of the scientific method to say, I wonder if this is true. I wonder. It looks like people are following this path. I wonder if that is true. Test that in some other data sphere. Don't test it in the same data sphere from which you derived that insight. Test it in a different one. 
Uh, it could be in a qualitative setting, just get a little panel together with your customers. Uh, and then and the last thing I would say, and this is a real, uh, a real soapbox for me, because it's, it's the thing I constantly fight with with clients, is appropriately value that feedback from your customers, right? Don't, I, I, I wrote a post about this once. I, got a, I, I bought a, a ring at, at Tiffin, right? It was for you, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. was he, oh, oh, I thought, oh, it was the, was the person behind you. Okay, no, no it, was, it, it, it was for you. And, and then I got sent, I got sent like a, a stupid survey, right? Like, we would like you to take this survey. And it was a 20-minute survey. Um, and I'm thinking, you know, you're a better brand. Figure out a way to appropriately value. I just, I just spent some money with you. Uh, yeah, just call me. Pick up the phone. Talk to me a little bit. Uh, you know, find out ways to create value, a value exchange, that information trade-off, the handoff of bone from child to dog and back again, <laughs> that have value for the customer as well. And uh, I mean, I get these stupid surveys all the time. Like, you know, it's a 20-minute survey and we really value it. <laughs> but that information is gold if it is representative of your customer base. And the only way to make it representative of your customer base is to appropriately value it. So that's, that's perfect. Thank you. Thank you.